Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for the Johns Manville HVAC product webinar. My name is Kim Melton, and I'm going to be your moderator for today's presentation. Joining me are Brennan Hall and Vanita Sharma, both from Johns Manville. Um, but before I get into having them introduce themselves, I would like to go over a few logistics. First, we're going to conclude the webinar with a live Q&A session. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can actually submit them via the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. If you don't see a Q&A box, you'll actually be able to click on Q&A in the top right corner, and that should open that box for you. So we're also frequently asked whether or not we send out these presentations upon their conclusion. And while we don't actually send out the presentation itself, we do post a recording of it online for you to watch at your leisure or even share with your colleagues if you'd like to. Now, this also ensures that you can have the presentation within its full context. So what's really unique about today's webinar is that it is a webinar strictly about JM products. So while we do offer a myriad of educational webinars on high-priority industry topics, today's webinar is actually a response to many requests we've had to go over JM products specifically. So that's actually what we're here to do today. Now, this is part of how we deliver the JM experience to you. At Johns Manville, the JM experience is part of our culture. And it's really based on four pillars, people, passion, perform, and protect. We offer webinars like this one to help educate the market and offer a tool and a resource for you and your business. So we're continuously striving to improve and evolve these webinars. So if you have any comments or suggestions as to how we can better accomplish this, or even if you feel like we've missed the mark today, we encourage you to fill out the survey that you're going to receive at the end of the webinar. And we use this feedback to improve our webinars and provide the information that has the most value to you. So on that note, let's get to introductions. Brennan, can you take a few minutes to introduce yourself? Sure, Kim. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brennan Hall. I am the HVAC product manager for Johns Manville. I'm responsible for our uh, duck wrap, duck liner, and duck board product lines. Uh, I've been with Johns Manville almost three years now uh, and have been in the industry for almost 10. And then I'm Vanita Sharma. I'm the portfolio leader for the HVAC and mechanical business um, at Johns Manville, and I've been with JM for 11 years. All right, and with that, we're going to get this started today. Uh, how an HVAC system works. So to set the stage for today's product webinar, it's important to understand how an HVAC system works. Uh, in the diagram on the right, we'll start with figure B, where you can see that's the central heating and air equipment that will draw in air through a fresh air intake, or also bring air back, uh, stale air that's been returned back into the system from the occupied spaces. Uh, the air will then, in turn, uh, travel up onto a, a trunk duct line illustrated by figure C. That trunk duct line will deliver the conditioned heated or cooled air down to uh, the, the tap outs that you see there running out to the actual uh, registers or, or diffusers or grills uh, shown there in the picture. Uh, as that air is, is conditioned and, and dispersed out into the, or to the occupied spaces, uh, that air, once it becomes stale and stagnant, will then in turn go back into figure D, which is the return air that will bring it back into a plenum uh, and then bring it back into the uh, central heating and air equipment where it's filtered and then reconditioned and dispersed back into the building. Insulation material selection. So when designing a duct system, it's critical to understand the criteria for selecting uh, your insulation. This diagram here illustrates eight common needs that insulation is typically used to meet. Three of the most common needs that insulation is, is used for is energy conservation or energy efficiency, which would be your thermals, uh, noise reduction or acoustical uh, control, uh, deadening of sound in different occupied spaces, and the third one that's most common is condensation control, JMHVAC insulation solutions. So within the portfolio, Johns Manville offers four different types of HVAC insulation solutions. We offer a duct wrap product in the top left-hand corner a duct liner product, a duct board product, and we, and we produce a flexible duct media insulation uh, that is used in a, a completed flexible duct uh, system or component in the HVAC system. One of the most important things that we always like to talk about in all of our webinars is the importance of fiberglass health and safety. Uh, biosoluble insulation fiberglass presents no cancer hazard. It's safe to make, install, and use if recommended work practices are followed. Typically, installing the product with long pants, uh, shirt, uh, long sleeve shirt, uh, eye protection will help you avoid temporary mechanical irritation. The fiberglass uh, hazard and exposure research targeted three areas. Those three areas were indoor glass fiber exposure study, human epidemiology studies, and long-term animal inhalation studies. All of those testing showed that fiberglass pre presented no cancer hazard. 
Fiberglass is by far one of the most uh, tested building materials in the construction industry today. External duct insulation, the key word here being external. External duct insulation, or more commonly referred to in our industry as duct wrap, is ideal for thermal control and energy efficiency. Duct wrap is available in varying thicknesses and densities, which will help you achieve specific R values or, or heat resistance. Um, the one thing that's interesting about duct wrap is because duct wrap is typically used on the outside or external of a duct, duct wrap provides very little acoustical uh, value or control. Uh, if you can imagine insulation being on the outside of a duct, the noise that is being transmitted down that duct is bouncing off of that sheet metal and moving all the way down that system. There's nothing to absorb it since the, the fiberglass duct insulation with duct wrap is on the outside of that rectangular or spiral duct. The three types of Fiberglass duct insulations that Johns Manville offers are Microlite FSK, which is a formaldehyde-free, foil-faced duct wrap product. We offer a Microlite PSK duct wrap, which is a formaldehyde-free, polyscrim-faced product, as you can see in the white picture illustrated on the bottom left. And we offer a Microlite standard product, which can be uh, uh, purchased as unfaced or with a vinyl facing. All those products come in roll form. Duct wrap insulation comparison. So we're going to break down a little bit about the characteristics of each of the duct wrap products in the product family. We're going to start on the left-hand side with Microlite FSK. Microlite FSK, or foil scrim craft, is typically a rolled good that is 48 inches wide and comes in multiple densities. Density is the pounds per cubic feet of fiberglass that's provided in the product. Typically, you'll see a type 75 or three quarter pound product, a type 100 or one pound product, or a type 150, which is a pound and a half product. Duck wrap comes in four different thicknesses, typically, ranging from inch and a half, two inch, two two or two and a fifth, to three inches thick. The installed R value, which I'll talk about in, the, in some of the subsequent slides, depending on the thickness and density combination, will deliver you an R42, a 6, an R8, or a 5.6, depending on the thickness and density combination you're using. As you can see in the picture, the foil scrim craft, or FSK, is the exterior shiny surface of the product. That is basically three components that are put into there that are laminated together. A layer of foil, a layer of reinforced fiberglass scrim, and a layer of craft paper. Those products are all three laminated together, and then they are applied during our manufacturing process to the fiberglass product itself to create a duct wrap insulation. One of the things that I think is very important here to point out is the NRC rating, or noise reduction coefficient. That's basically the ability of, a, a, of an insulation to absorb uh, sound, uh, the, the properties or characteristics that allow a, an insulation product to uh, uh, absorb sound and deaden sound or, or bring an acoustical value. With duct wrap, because the product is on the outside of a sheet metal duct, typically, the, the NRC rating is not rated. There is no real value for adding any sort of NRC rating to duct wrap insulation because it's on the outside of a duct. A couple other things that I want to point out here. Uh, Green Guard is one of the ratings. We have Green Guard Gold from Aldehyde Free rating with our duct wrap. That's important for some of you that might be doing lead projects or things like that. Uh, it'll get you some lead credits in a green initiative. And with the Microlite FSK duct wrap, that's really the workhorse product of the industry. Probably 99% or 98% of what you would see in the field on a job site, in a warehouse with a contractor, is going to be our Microlite FSK duct wrap. That is really the, the premier Cadillac product for duct wrap uh, for the industry. Moving to the next product is Microlite PSK. PSK stands for Poly Scrim Craft. That is the white facing that you're seeing on the outside of that roll there. The basic characteristics of the polyscrim craft duct wrap are very similar to the FSK. It comes in the same thicknesses and provides the same R values. Um, the main feature is that the polyscrim craft is white, as shown in the picture, which is a great uh, uh, characteristic for uh, duct wrap products for an engineer who's looking to specify an aesthetic uh, application. Things like looking to match a white ceiling, white walls, adjacent pipe insulation or coverings. Any of those type things are great for aesthetics, and that's why uh, PSK was brought to market. The third product I'd like to touch on in the duct wrap family is our Microlite Standard product. This product is really a, a, a custom application product. There's, there's places throughout the United States that don't need a vapor barrier with a FSK or PSK type facing. 
Um, it's an unfaced product that lends itself to a lot of different uh, applications. It's kind of a utilitarian type product that can be used as a, a multi-purpose insulation. We do offer it with a vinyl facing, which is very stretchy. It's white. Um, that kind of has its own specific applications and, and opportunities to use that product. We'll move to the next slide and talk a little bit about duct wrap installation. So when it comes to installing duct wrap, I want to direct your attention to the, to the image on the right. When you would open up a roll of duct wrap or a package of duct wrap, the image on the right-hand side of the slide here on the screen is going to show you exactly what a roll of duct wrap would look like. We'll start on the inside and move to the outside. You can see the brown colored fiberglass that is there. That is a, it's a blanket form and a roll form. It is then applied and glued to the foil scrim or FSK facing there that you can see as it's rolled up and wrapped up into the roll form. One thing that I would like to point out is on the left hand side of that photo, you can see what we refer to as a staple flap. There is a two inch staple flap that is, that is factory applied for allowed, allowing you to button and, and join uh, adjacent sections of duct wrap in the field easily uh, with your staples and, and allows you to efficiently uh, put the duct wrap together on a duct. Now I'd like to kind of focus your attention over to the left hand side where you're seeing a gentleman install duct wrap around a sheet metal duct. Um, when applying microlite duct wrap, duct should be clean and dry, tightly sealed at all the joints and seams, um, and it should be installed in accordance with instructions from the manufacturer so that the compression is controlled. Uh, the installed R value is based on the installation of the product over sheet metal ductwork with the average installed thickness at 75% of the nominal thickness. That means that no more than 25% compression is allowed for duct wrap. When you're looking to start installation, installation of your duct wrap, it's important to refer to the stretch out dimensions for the product. The stretch out dimensions can be found on a data sheet provided at jm.com or you can find it on a lot of our packaging where we actually provide the layout uh, stretch out dimension chart for you to take the perimeter of your duct and actually lay out the product and cut it to fit around your rectangular or round duct as needed. You should always install the duct wrap with the foil facing towards the outside and tightly butt the insulation seams together. The two inch form staple flap must completely overlap the facing at the insulation on the under end of the piece of duct wrap that you are wrapping around the duct. Rectangular square ducts are to be installed so that the insulation is not excessively compressed at the duct corners. Anywhere there is a corner on the duct, it should not be pulled extremely tight, reducing any of the R value and thermals provided by the product. All seams should be stapled approximately six inches on center with outward clenching staples. The FSK or vapor barrier should be sealed at all the joints with a pressure sensitive tape matching the foil facing uh, itself. Uh, moving on to just some common questions about duct wrap itself that we, tech, that we get here at our technical hotline that I wanted to touch on for the group today. Um, one of those is what is the difference between the installed R value and the out of package R value on duct wrap? Both of those values are published and printed and I wanted to make sure that it was clear what the difference uh, between those two are. The out of package R value is basically when you unroll that roll of duct wrap and allow that insulation or fiberglass to completely recover itself, that is the out of package R value. That is the fully recovered uh, 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 thickness of that duct wrap that is tested for the heat flow resistance um, and gives a value of, of an R that's out of the package. The installed R value is once you wrap that insulation around the duct, that fiberglass is going to compress, which does compromise some of your R value integrity. As you compress that to no more than 25%, that's when you get an installed R value uh, that, that, that is what is actually being applied to that section of duct work as it is. A second question that we get a lot is, can I paint duct wrap? There's a lot of different applications out there where someone's trying to match a green ceiling or a, or a blue ceiling or something like that. Um, duct wrap has a flame spread index rating of 25 and a smoke rating of 50, and those are tests that are derived from an ASTM standard called E84, um, the surface burning characteristics of building materials. When you use duct wrap as intended, the performance characteristics of the duct wrap remain constant for the life of those products. There's, there's no problem with, with applying the FSK uh, as it is. However, because there are so many different types of paints that are out there, there's no way that we as a manufacturer can test all the different types of painting that could be applied to an FSK surface. Therefore, if you do choose to paint it, the UL void warranty that we have or the UL warranty rating that we receive from UL laboratories is void and it does uh, take away the warranty on the product. Um, there may be paints out there that do allow you to paint it that maintain the 2550 rating, 
Uh, certain Class A non-combustible paints may have that, but you should always check with your local building code department or the fire marshal and make sure that it's an approved practice before you move forward with that. One of the next things I want to touch on is the kind of staples you should use. Um, we always get a lot of questions about what staples I should use. It's very important that you should use an outward clenching staple. If you try to use a regular staple, a lot of times the FSK uh, will not catch and stop that actual straight staple or inward facing staple. It will shoot right through there, creating a hole in your vapor barrier. It's very important that your installer uses an outward clenching staple before taping it and, and sealing the system on the vapor barrier side. Is pinning required? So one of the things that is typically asked or tends to be asked is, is should I pin or mechanically fasten duct wrap um, to, a, to a sheet metal duct? Where rectangular ducts are 24 inches in width or greater, the duct wrap does need to be secured on the bottom side of that duct with a metal fastener such as a weld pin or a speed clip. They should be spaced about 18 inches off center and that'll help avoid, avoid any sagging of that insulation material creating, creating any voids or gaps. If you do penetrate that FSK facing uh, with a mechanical fastener, it's important to go back over and seal that vapor barrier up with, a, with an FSK approved tape for the application. The last question I want to touch on is do the various facings have different permeance ratings or, or vapor transmission ratings? The FSK and PSK products uh, have a vapor barrier rating of 0 .02 perms. They are exactly the same. They are actually considered vapor retarders and that's why they're on duct wrap. They help control the condensation within the product. So those two products, which make up probably 99.9% .9 of what's out there in the market, have a very low perm rating in our vapor, vapor retarders to help control uh, condensation in, in the application. Moving on to internal duct liner. Internal duct liner insulation or duct liner is a product that goes on the inside of a sheet metal duct. Duck liner's main, one of duck liner's most uh, prominent features is it provides great acoustical control throughout your duct system. It also provides great thermal control and energy efficiency. Duck liner comes in a variety of thicknesses to help achieve the, the specific R values uh, required by code. John's Mandel also offers water repellent coatings to help inhibit microbial growth. Uh, and it also helps improve the durability of our product in harsh shop environments or field installations. The first family of duct liners that I want to talk about specifically ties to rectangular duct liners. John's Manual offers a product by the name of Line Acoustic RC. That is our uh, primary workhorse product. We offer a, a Permacoat Line Acoustic RC HP. We offer a three pound board called Permacoat Line Acoustic R300 products. And we also have a textile product called Linatex that has long textile fibers. We're going to take a dive here into the actual individual product lines and give you a little bit more information around each one of these. Um, the first one that we're going to start with on the far left is Line Acoustic RC. When you look at the picture there, most duct liners or traditionally duct liners come in rolled good form. You can see that the black surface there that's showing facing upwards, that would be considered your airstream surface. So when you're actually putting duct liner inside of a sheet metal duct, that black surface is what is actually facing the airstream. The bottom side or the, the fiberglass side, uh, we refer to it as the core, is what is glued down to the sheet metal. So your black surface will be exposed to the airstream. The fiberglass will be applied to the sheet metal itself. Duck liner comes in uh, half inch, one inch, inch and a half, and two inch thicknesses. Uh, it has, on Line Acoustic RC, we have not only a fiberglass core, we have, a we have an Airstream glass mat surface that is applied to the surface uh, of each of the products, and we also have what we call a permacoat coating. It's a, it's a black acrylic coating that is applied to both the top coat surface as well as the edges of our product. Um, the Line Acoustic RC product is truly the workhorse product uh, of the product line. It is, it is uh, what we, we go to market with and is, tends to be what is predominantly purchased by most of our customers throughout the United States uh, in, in the world. Uh, with RCHP, the only really difference here with RCHP as it ties to uh, actual RC is HP is kind of a high performance uh, product. You can see in the NRC rating down there are the noise reduction coefficient. It's got a 0.75 NRC rating. It's a little bit higher uh, rating at one inch than what you're going to get from the RC product itself. Uh, that's because it is, it's a little bit higher density. We add a little bit more glass to that. 
And we use that sometimes to meet different density-driven specifications that are in the marketplace. The third item on here is our R300 board. R300 board is a 4x8 board product that has a glass Airstream surface as well as a permacoat coating on the top of it. It is a three pound board, as I mentioned before, and comes in one inch, inch and a half, or two inch thicknesses. The core is the yellow uh, fiberglass core that you can see there in the photo, um, and it is typically used for different types of custom applications. It's a, it's a rigid plenum board. Uh, we use it in a lot of exposed theater applications or, or sound rooms, things like that. Anywhere where a board is desired and applied is a great application for the R300 product. The last product I want to touch on here is our Linatex product line. Linatex is a textile fiber. It's a, it's a little bit type of different fiberglass process for producing the material. Um, it does come in roll form, and there's three different densities that textile fibers come in. Type 150 or pound and a half, type 200 or two pound, and type 300 or three pound. Uh, the thicknesses for duck liner range from half inch all the way up to two inch if necessary and has a core uh, fiberglass mat. You can see the yellow there on that product is the actual fiberglass core, and then has a black mat surface uh, on the Airstream side with an edge coating. Um, one of the things that's interesting about textile liner is when you're talking about the R value and NRC ratings of textile fibers and textile fiberglass uh, duck liner products, it's really dependent upon the type of uh, density that you're actually using. So depending on what R value or NRC uh, rating is required for the application will depend on how much uh, density you will need in that product to actually meet those. Um, Linatex is, is a old product. It's been around for a long time. It's one of the first types of duck liner uh, fiberglass processes that were, that were uh, brought forth in the marketplace. Uh, there's still a lot of old specifications that still call for uh, duck textile fiberglass. And uh, there's a lot of markets out there uh, throughout the United States that still have a demand from the contractor end to use uh, textile products. Moving on to duck liner installation. Um, when you're installing duck liner, one of the things about duck liner is, is a lot of the liner is dependent upon the metal and the sheet metal connection that it's actually being applied to. Duck liner comes in a lot of different widths, um, a lot of half inch and quarter inch type increments, and a lot of that is based on the sheet metal fabrication itself and the type of metal connection that's being made when you're actually joining two sections of duck together at the transverse joints. NEMA, or the North American Insulation Manufacturers Association, and SMACNA, who is the sheet metal and air conditioning contractors, provide a lot of industry standards and guidelines for things like mechanical fastening or pinning, as you can see in the, in the diagram at the bottom, where it gives you the pin schedule and spacing. Uh, it also talks about uh, where airstream nosings are necessary uh, on the upstream side uh, of, the, of the fan that's blowing the, the air down the system. Uh, and it also talks about um, different types of glue applications, among other things as it ties to fiberglass. If you're looking at the pictures on the top of the screen, we'll start on the top left-hand side. Uh, what you see here is, is an is a automated coil line. It's the, it's the pinning station section of it. So to the left of this picture upstream is where the fiberglass would be in a roll form in a cradle, where it would be unrolled and, and pulled out and then uh, glued to a piece of flat sheet metal. As it is glued, it then in turn comes through this pinning station where those bowls or silver bowls at the top of each one of those uh, pin spotters there is actually mechanically fastening the pins, and you can see that as it comes downstream. The next picture there, as that slides down, it will be broken or, or turned into a 90-degree bend. That 90-degree section will be paired with a, a, a symmetrical piece that will then in turn be hammered together and create a section of line insulated duct insulation. On the right-hand side of our picture, I wanted to just touch on a couple products. Johns Manville offers uh, insulation uh, sealants. We have a, what's called Super Seal product line, our Super Seal HV or high viscosity product, as well as our Super Seal edge treatment product on the right-hand side. Uh, one of the things that are required is, if you look at the uh, actual picture, that all transverse edges coated uh, on a sheet metal duct are required to be uh, uh, coated and applied with a, a coating itself. Um, the HV product is a very thick, trowelable product that goes on gray and dries black, so you can see where it's been applied. Um, it fills gaps and creates a, a nice barrier to, to fill any nicks or voids. The edge treatment product is exactly that. It's for treating the cut edges of fiberglass, where it will dry hard and seal your actual edges of the product for uh, liner application in the field. So some frequently asked questions that we commonly get about duck liner that I want to touch on. Um, the first one is, as I kind of spoke about before, is the duck liner density piece. 
Um, we've actually, actually, I personally wrote a blog that's on JM.com that you can go and actually read a lot more about this. But really, in 1970, the Thermal Insulation Manufacturers Association, which evolved into NEMA, who is the North American Manufacturers Association, uh, published a standard for fiberglass duct liner. Um, that, that standard addressed a lot of critical characteristics that are still highly regarded today for duct liner performance, but um, it really kind of was, was the genesis for standardizing liner density and specifications. Um, the thought process behind standardizing liner density evolved from the practice of using insulation density as the primary selection criteria for duct liner. Um, at that time, industry professionals assumed that all liners performed equally and that density was the key differ differentiating uh, driver in insulation performance. The problem with that is as manufacturing technologies and processes evolved, uh, the characteristics that were required uh, to actually create a ducted lined system, a lined system of duct, um, density was no longer as important. Um, so what happened in 1986 is that the insulation manufacturers and ASTM recognized that all duct liners were not created the same, so they attempted to rectify this misconception by approving a new standard for duct liner selection criteria, which is under the ASTM C1071 standard specification for fiberglass duct lining insulation. The new standard basically eliminated density as a driver for needing to select uh, your duct liner. Uh, it became a performance-based uh, criteria and kind of took the guesswork out of things for the engineer and the contractor or building owner that you could focus on comprehensive duct liner performance rather than density. It allowed you to write specifications based on acoustical performance or thermal performance, fiber erosion resistance, surface burning characteristics, or any other key duct liner performance characteristics. So, uh, duct liner uh, density is really not as important as it once was, and, and we still see a lot of old specifications that come through. So make sure that when you're looking to select a duct liner that you're really uh, uh, specifying a, a thermal value or an acoustical value to make sure that that's what you're going to get with the product that you select. One of the things about Johns Manville products, especially with our line acoustic RC product, is, is why is the coating important? What, what's necessary about the coating? Why do I need it? Um, the coating is a really nice feature of our line acoustic RC product. Um, it helps with water repellency um, and it aids in, the, in, aids in inhibiting microbial growth and fungus and also provides a lot of durability for the harsh shop environments when ducts are uh, being stacked up on top of each other and things can be damaged. Uh, that coating provides an extra barrier of protection to ensure that your, your insulation is not being damaged on its way to the job site. One of the things that we always get questions asked around is kind of how we ensure our quality control. What do we do to make sure that we're, we're putting the best products out into the marketplace? Well, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is JM is vertically integrated uh, on the manufacturing side when it comes to our products. We actually produce our own glass mat facing. We produce the fiberglass itself, itself obviously, and we have our, our proprietary permacoat coating that we use. Um, so we're very turnkey in kind of our application and production of of manufacturing our duct liner products. So it allows us to have really great uh, uh, quality control around all of our products. And the last kind of question that we get asked a lot is what, is the, what makes JM duct liner different? Um, JM has what's referred to as a flame attenuated process or sometimes termed a pot and marble process where we actually produce our own marbles for the fiberglass melt those marbles literally in a pot that produces streams of glass that are uh, pulled down through rollers and then actually flame attenuated and, and blown out onto the chain or onto a collection mat that allows our products to be very consistent uh, in, in, in its thickness and, and uniformity across the whole product. Um, we are the only manufacturer that actually has a flame attenuated process for our production of duct liner. So we just talked about rectangular duct. Now I want to talk about the, the other side of the industry, and that's kind of the spiral or oval duct liner space. Um, in the picture here, we have three products that we use and sell out into the market space for spiral or oval opportunities or applications. The first one here is what we call our Spiracoustic Plus product. Uh, you can see it on the left-hand side. It's a single wall self-supporting product that goes inside of a spiral duct section. We have our Spiral SG line, which is a, a insulation specifically uh, manufactured for double wall insulation. Double wall insulation means, as you can see in the picture, there is an inner core of metal wrapped with insulation, then an outer core of metal is then in turn placed over top of that fiberglass uh, Spiral SG insulation material. The third one on here, which we talked about in duck wrap, but again, I kind of said it's a kind of a utilitarian type product, is our MicroLite standard product. 
which we can actually slit down into very small 9 inch or 12 inch increments that uh, certain shops like to use in their double wall process for actually applying uh, the, the insulation in between the metal, two metal ca uh, casings and cores. So taking a deeper dive into our spiral and overliner duct liner offering, we'll start on the left hand side here with Spire Acoustic Plus. Spire Acoustic Plus, uh, you can see here the, the flat sheets that are kind of sitting under that spiral duct. Spire Acoustic Plus comes in a 4x10 sheet. Um, it is pre-curved or cut at the factory. Um, you can see the little grooves there that are being shown in the picture. Those are factory cut kerfs. Um, it comes in one inch, inch and a half, and two inch thickness to meet whatever R value is necessary for the application. We have a couple different configurations or cut configurations for the product that we refer to as VSD, which is very small diameter, SD, which is small diameter, or LD, which is large diameter. Um, different applications, I'll touch on those in a minute here, but different applications you're going to need to purchase or look at using a different uh, kerf cut in your application and process. As I mentioned before, uh, Spire Acoustic Plus is a, a, it's a single wall uh, liner. It is self-supporting. There's no need for glue or pins with this product. Um, it does not have a glass mat surface on the Airstream side. That black surface is actually our Permacoat acrylic coating. So there's no risk of any uh, delamination of any glass mat or fibers into the Airstream because we have a coated surface there. Um, the applications for it, obviously with Spiral, is, it's, it's a Spiral application. Um, one of the things, it's, it's significantly lighter than its double wall counterpart. Um, in, in straight sections especially, it can be a lot quicker application, and it provides excellent acoustical value for wherever you're using it. Moving on to the Spiral SG product line, um, we kind of talked about with use, it's a, it's a double wall uh, product that's used in double wall spiral pipe insulation. Um, we make it in a lot of different thicknesses and widths, anywhere from one inch up to four inches thick, um, and it comes in widths from 36 inches all the way up to 72 inches. Spiral pipe is typically made in eight foot, 96 inch long sections or 10 foot, 120 inch long sections. So depending on what your application is and how you're actually going to insulate that, whether it's two 60 inch pieces, whether it's a 72 inch and a 40 and a 36 inch piece, however you want to get to 120 or 96, it gives you the freedom to kind of play with what you want to do and how you want to do that at the shop when it's being fabricated. Um, it can be used in oval products as well as spiral. Uh, double wall is kind of the tried and true method. It's been a long, around a very long time. Um, it, it's, it's spec driven uh, and it's, a lot of shops still use a, a double wall system. It's a very proven technology. Um, and then the last one down here is our Microlite Standard product and I mentioned before really the main thing that's different between the, the Microlite Standard and the Spiral SG is is really we can slit it down the 9 inch or 12 inch sections where a lot of fabricators or installation shops like the candy cane or take those small sections and wrap it around that pipe numerous times uh, to get to it. So it's really kind of driven by installation preferences and the market space that you're in and how you want to actually put the, the section of double wall together as a fabricator. Spire Acoustic Plus. So a little bit more information around Spire Acoustic Plus. It's a single wall duct liner um, used to insulate single wall systems. Those kerf cuts are factory uh, cut at our facility down in Texas. Uh, it is a board product with consistent thickness all the way around, meaning you're going to get the same R value all the way around consistently on the whole circumference of that uh, section of ductwork. Uh, at one inch, inch and a half or two, there's no compression with that product. It provides great acoustics and great condensation control. Uh, the Airstream surface has our antimicrobial coating, uh, which makes it great for durability and it's very easy to clean. We found that it's a really great option for large diameter ducts. Uh, just recently, uh, Spire Acoustic Plus was used in the new Atlanta Falcon Stadium on all the bowl duct that's in there on duct sections up to 96 inches uh, round. And it, is, it, it provided the contractor with a uh, much faster, much easier install and a much lighter weight install than what he would have gotten with other types of systems. Um, as far as the diameter sizing chart, I had kind of mentioned that before. Um, the VSD or very small diameter, uh, I'll kind of give you an example. Um, the VSD cut on a one inch thick product will, will service you anywhere from eight inch round up to 16 inch round in, ter in terms of the diameter of that spiral pipe. The SD product at one inch I believe goes from 16 inches or 18 inches up to 36 inches and then the LD will be anything 36 inches and up and once you get into some of the LD sizes you will have to mechanically fasten and pin uh, the material to it because that diameter is getting so large. Um, Looking at some of the pictures here, I just wanted to touch on the picture in the bottom right corner um, of how you kind of install this product. 
Because it comes in a sheet form, you will take that product, you will cut it to whatever layout dimension that you need. Once it is rolled up, you'll seal that seam where the two pieces come together and tape that down with a UL181 pressure sensitive tape. Um, as you go to slide it into the spiral pipe section, you will kind of smash that product down as you can kind of see where he put it into kind of a heart shape and slid that into that duct section where it allows itself to expand and self-support against itself. Um, all of these videos for Spire Acoustic Plus installation, whether it's a T, whether it's a reducer or straight sections or fittings, you can find all those uh, full uh, how-to videos on JM.com on our Spire Acoustic page. They're, they're all there for you guys to see uh, as needed for any questions. With Spiral SG or a Microlite standard product with the double wall, um, it's, a, it's a commonly used alternative product to single wall spiral pipe. Um, on a double wall system, you can have a very solid inner metal core or you can have a perforated core which helps control the acoustics so that the sound as it comes down the duct goes through that, those small holes inside of that perfed uh, inner liner and are absorbed into the fiberglass to provide you the, the acoustical control that you need. Um, one of the things that we talked about was on the Spire Acoustic Plus, you have a consistent one inch thickness all the way around with that board product. If you don't use spacers inside of your double wall system where that insulation is kind of wrapped in the middle there, gravity is working against you. That inner core is going to want to lay down and as you compress fiberglass, that causes the degradation and integrity of the R value to be reduced. So making sure that you have spacers in that system is very important to maintain that consistent R value all the way around with a spiral SG or double wall system. Um, it is considerably heavier, about 33% heavier than what uh, a single wall uh, spire acoustic line system is, and it leads to being a little bit more labor intensive sometimes, and it needs hairier duct supports, things like that. So there's some kind of different things um, that happen with double wall systems relative to spire acoustic plus. So some common questions that we get relative to spiral acoustic or single wall spiral liner. So there's a lot of uh, situations out there where contractors will actually v-groove duckboard um, to kind of get the same results. Um, we have a spiral acoustic plus product for that application. It's specifically engineered for insulating and lining spiral ducts in a single wall manner. We do not have any sort of glass mat airstream surface. When you're fabricating or v-grooving duct, there's a lot of tension that's put as those blades are pulled through that piece of uh, duckboard, which can lead to the mat facing uh, delaminating off of that product itself. So we don't recommend actually using our duckboard for v-groove systems, but we know that it does go on and there's a lot of contractors that are set up to actually v-groove. But we have a product that is specifically engineered that can be specified as a system for insulating single wall spiral pipe. Uh, the difference between VSD, SD, and LD, um, the very small diameter, small diameter, and large diameter, Really the main difference between them is actually the cut and the distance of the cut in between. If you were to start at the LD or the large diameter, the distance between the curve cuts is pi, 3.14. Um, on the SD it's half of pi, and on the VSD it's half of half of pi, and that's how they're spaced out to be able to, to fit in and perfectly and cut out what you need to meet the different sort of circumferences or, or needs for that spiral diameter. And then when would I use a double wall system versus a single wall system? Um, double wall is tried and true practice. It's, it's been around there for a long time. In situations where you need a lighter weight product, um, in large diameter situations, or any, and even in a lot of small diameter situations where maybe space is a constraint, single wall spiral, spiral acoustic applications are great for restaurant type applications or things like that where you've been sitting in a restaurant and you've seen the actual spiral pipe leaking and dripping uh, condensation onto your table as you're eating, that, that duct needs to be insulated and Spire Acoustic is a great way to use it in that situation that's non-obtrusive uh, and easy to install. And then the last product that I'm going to touch on today is Duckboard, which is a fiberglass finished duct system. Duckboard comes in a 4x10 sheet and is a board product that can be grooved and cut out that is actually fabricated into the duct itself in lieu of a sheet metal duct. Duckboard is great for acoustical control. It provides great thermal control and energy efficiency, and it's available in different thicknesses uh, to achieve specific R values. It is a really great lightweight solution uh, for creating any sort of duct system that you need in the field. The four duckboard products that Johns Manville offers uh, in the upper left-hand corner is our matte face micro air duckboard, our super duct RC product, our micro air LP or low pressure, and diffuser board. Getting into the product comparison, starting on the left-hand side is our matte face micro air. As you can see in the picture, the product itself has a black airstream surface, uh, on the, that, which is actually going to be the, the side that's going to be uh, exposed to the airstream. 
you have the yellow core, and then you have the FSK silver facing that is applied to the back as the vapor barrier. The product comes in one inch, inch and a half, and two inch thick uh, thicknesses to meet R4, R6, and R8 uh, needs out there in the marketplace. Our micro air, mad, micro air uh, duck board, or MAD board as we refer to it, uh, is really a workhorse product in the JM duck board portfolio. That's what you're going to see a lot of places being applied and, and used in the, in the market today. The second product is our SuperDuck RC product. Um, the main difference between the MAD board product and the SuperDuct RC product is the coated Airstream surface. Um, this product has our uh, proprietary acrylic coated surface to provide durability in the field. Uh, it helps with uh, condensation control, uh, an additional layer of protection for microbial or fungus growth. Um, it's really a nice product for light commercial. It's very specification driven um, or high end homes uh, with a homeowner looking to make, really make an impact on some acoustical values in his home, things like that. The next product is our Microlayer LP board. That product comes in 13 16 inch thick. Um, that is primarily a product used in manufactured housing. So that product will go into RVs, campers, um, boats, buses, things like that. It's a, it's a manufactured housing type product that is typically used for those applications. And then the last product is our diffuser board. And diffuser board is exactly used for what it says. It's used in diffusers and register boxes. So if you were to look up into your office space right now, wherever you're sitting, you can see through the diffuser, and the last thing you want to see is a bright yellow color. Um, that diffuser board gives a black surface so that it hides and makes that vision up into the duct a dark surface right there at the diffuser. It comes in one inch thick and one and three eighths inch thick to kind of fit some of the dimensions of the diffusers that are made today. Two important features that I want to make sure I point out about duckboard is the male and female ship laps. On the top picture where you're seeing the black surface exposed here, that is what's referred to as the female ship lap. Um, when, during the manufacturing process, we try to push our density out to those ship laps so that they can close. When you're closing that system, those ship laps allow it to kind of lock in place to each other as you're stapling and taping that system together. The foil face side on the right hand side, that's going to be the male ship lap. So those two pieces will kind of fold over together and come together to create a nice solid uh, closed off barrier. And we offer our ship laps on all of our products, one inch, inch and a half and two inch thick uh, in a pre-molded form. The Superduct RC with the permacoat coating, you can see here how the coating will actually penetrate a little bit into the surface of, our, of the product itself. Um, that's really the nice feature of the, the RC, uh, Superduct RC product is you have that coating. It gives you the water repellency and adds the durability of the product. As far as duckboard fabrication goes, um, I'm going to start it with the picture on the right with the green uh, picture of the machine. That's called a glass master machine. That is the, the machine that most duckboard is grooved with. You can see the little tray there with the kniving system that's, that's, that's uh, right there in the center of that. Those knives can be adjusted to make the different diameters of the duct, and it will take out a piece of duct or piece of fiberglass grooved out. As you can see, the gentleman on the far left-hand side taking out that piece of grooved product that create, was created by that machine. Um, on the bottom right-hand side, you can also use hand tools. Uh, there's a couple of guys that manufacture specific hand tools for actually making those shiplap cuts and grooves into that duckboard uh, to, to actually make the system. And the gentleman here in the middle, um, once you've taken that duckboard, you've cut it to the diameter and the, and the specification that you want uh, by length and width of your, of your duct. Uh, you close that system up, where then you will in turn staple it with outward clenching staples. Um, and you also uh, take a UL181 tape and uh, squeegee that tape down. You can see him squeegeeing the tape down right now uh, to apply that pressure sensitive tape there to the actual duct board itself. A couple of questions that I want to touch on that were frequently asked. Uh, why is flexural rigidity important? A lot of times you'll see, uh, hey, I'm ordering a one inch type 475 or a type 800 board. Flexural rigidity is the stiffness of the board. It's, it's, it's how stiff the board is, and it really ties to the duct reinforcement schedule and how often you have to reinforce a duct once you get over a certain water gauge pressure that's necessary. So the 475 is typically tied to one inch. The Type 800 is tied to our inch and a half and two inch products, but it really just refers to the strength and rigidity and stiffness of that product. As far as how duckboard comes packaged, there's a couple different options. You can buy it, uh, loose sheets on a pallet stacked up uh, 44 inches high, 30 inches high, or 22 sheets high, depending on uh, 
what configuration you need in terms of thickness of that product. And we also offer duckboard in a carton form, so if you only need six sheets or four sheets or three sheets given the thickness of the product, uh, it has a real nice easy pull tear tab that you can use to take the product out of the box. The third question we get is what kind of tape should I use? Um, Closures on ductboard is a very integral part of the fiberglass duct construction system. Um, closures only, con clo 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 ugh, only closures complying with UL181A for pressure sensitive tape, uh, H for heat activated aluminum foil tape, or with M for glass fabric and mastic have been tested for compliance with all structural and safety requirements. It's very important to use UL181 tape for sealing and uh, securing your ductboard together. And then the last question is, what's the difference between using duckboard and insulated sheet metal ducts? Um, I mean, really, duckboard is taking the actual product itself and creating it into a duct. There's no metal component to it. It's actually taking the physical board, cutting the grooves out, and creating a duct itself. With insulated sheet metal ducts, you can line it or you can wrap it, but you have to have the metal uh, there. So that's really the two main differences between a duckboard system and a sheet metal duct system. Last but not least, we'll talk about insulated flexible duct systems. Um, so, one key point to note on this type of a system is that JM only makes the insulation portion of the finished flexible duct. And similar to both duct liner and duct board, if the system is insulated, it will provide both acoustical and thermal control. And then flexible ducts are typically used um, as they are an extremely efficient and economical way for installers to connect between the trunk ducts and registers and diffusers in a room. Finally, they're a lightweight and economical option for folks to use. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, JM's uh, fiberglass, FlexGlass EQ. Um, the product is designed so that the usage is applicable where internal air temperatures do not exceed 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Similar to the other products that um, Brennan just talked about, they offer our values of 4.2, 6, and 8. And then the insulation is formaldehyde free, which leads to achieving and certifying Green Guard Gold, as well as SCS Global Certification of Indoor Advantage Gold. We do put in 12% recycle content into the finished product. And then as far as um, the finished flexible duct, so on the right-hand side, the construction of a finished flexible duct you can see that the fiberglass is sandwiched between an inner core and an outer jacket. The inner core is typically made out of a spiral reinforced wire. And then you can see that the outer jacket, in this picture, um, we see a silver jacket. It's, uh, they're designed as a vapor retarder, and they can be made out of materials such as metallized polyester with a fiberglass scrim, or um, you can get them in a black, just polyethylene type of, a, of material. Manufacturers who make the finished flexible duct do offer variations on both the core and the jacket material depending on specialized applications. So um, when would you use insulated flexible duct? As mentioned, they're an extremely efficient way to tap off of the main trunk line and connect to registers and diffusers and occupied spaces. And then where would you purchase a finished product which uses JM's insulation, a finished flexible duct using JM's insulation. So we partner with companies such as Quiet Flex Manufacturing and Hot and Cooley who make the finished duct. And then I'm going to turn it over to Kim and she's going to go over some additional resources for you. All right. Thank you, Vanita. Um, so again, like she just said, I'd like to take a couple minutes to go over the free additional educational resources that we offer that you can use to actually better help educate uh, yourself and your team. So the first one, as you can see on your screen right here, is JM Academy. Now, this is a series of free online training modules. They go over everything from um, introductions to HVAC systems to how to install JM's HVAC insulation. We also offer a similar series for our mechanical insulation systems and products. So you can get to the training modules directly from the HVAC or mechanical pages on our website. Now, the second resource I'd like to talk about is our blog. So we both write and curate the content for this blog. Now this means we're not only relying on our own technical experts, but we're also finding information from technical experts throughout the industry. And we really want to make this content as rich and robust for you as possible. So our blog topics are going to hit on everything from targeted technical information to the latest news in the industry to scientific details that are actually critical to successful insulation system design and operation. 
Now the third one we'll talk about here is our exclusive content section of our website. Now we know you can't always attend our live webinars or even you might have to duck out halfway through. This exclusive content section is where you'll be able to go and access all of our recorded webinars, um, even videos and white papers. This is really a resource and a library for you to access the rich educational content that we have. So in addition to those standard resources, we do have some upcoming events. Um, our first one is on December 12th, we have an upcoming webinar on um, codes and code compliance. So this is going to be co-hosted between Johns Manville and Cadmus Group, and it's really going to dive into building codes and building code compliance. So really this webinar is going to touch on everything from what you can expect to see in HVAC and mechanical codes in the future to the driving forces behind building code evolution. So if you have any questions about building codes or how they're going to impact your system designs and installation, this is definitely a webinar you're going to want to attend. And you can actually see the um, sign up link right there. And this link will also go out in an email following this webinar to you so you can sign up there as well. So we will also be visiting the AHR Expo 2018 in Chicago. Um, if you want to stop by and talk to any of our technical experts, we'd love to have a conversation with you. Our sales team will be there. We're going to be doing live duckboard demos all day, as well as um, spire acoustic installation demonstrations. So this is a good opportunity to see how these products actually work. And if you'll be there, we certainly welcome you to come by and introduce yourselves. We'd love to meet you. So also, everybody who attended the webinar today, you are going to get a certificate of completion. And this will be sent directly to your email by Friday. And again, in that email, you'll probably find links to uh, the resources I've discussed here today. So with that, we're going to start diving into a couple questions. And the first question we got here today was, does either FSK or PSK provide a vapor barrier? Brennan, do you want to take that one? Sure. Uh, good question. Both FSK and PSK uh, products do provide a vapor barrier. They provide a .02 perm rating. Um, and, and it's important to have those uh, as you wrap that around the duct that you seal those off by stapling it and taping it so that it ensures a complete seal uh, for both of the products, it, it, it does control condensation, and both of those products have the same uh, perm rating as well. So either one can be used uh, to to retard uh, or to retard uh, the vapor uh, transmission or um, as vapor barriers themselves. Excellent, thank you. So the next question is: Is the color of fiberglass, pink, yellow, brown, etc., that just marketing, or do the different colors indicate um, an application like a wet environment, etc.? And Vanita, can you tackle that one? Sure, absolutely. So the color is actually dependent on the binded system that is used, and a binder is basically a glue that holds the fiberglass together. So binders can come in various chemistries, such as acrylic binders, which tend to naturally cure and become white in color. You can have bio-based binders, which naturally cure to be brown in color. You can have phenolic binders, which cure to be yellow in color. Um, there are times when folks do color for marketing, so sometimes the pink may indicate a, a marketing element. But then there are colors that fiberglass comes in where they're coded for applications, like in the aerospace industry. They color them green, pink, yellow, gray, uh, for the density, thickness combinations. Excellent, thank you. So um, this one actually refers back to painting the duct wrap. Um, Brennan, if we, if you use a certified paint as you discussed, is there um, is the product still warranty? If if the product is painted and it does not degrade the permeability or the appearance of the facing or cause delamination of the facing layers or disbonding of any of the seals or joints or anything like that, we will still warranty that product. But it does void the. Uh, UL rating for that product on the flame and smoke spread. Okay, great. Uh, the next one is on duckboard, and that is, are the transitions and bends also duckboard pro duckboard products, or are these components metal? Good question. On all of the duckboard products, when you're creating a duckboard system, you can fabricate the duckboard itself into angles, offsets. Uh, uh, three-piece 90s, you can make the entire system out of duckboard. There's different ways and techniques that is actually detailed uh, in, a, in NEMA's duckboard installation and fabrication guide. Um, we also have some resources on our website, I think, that will take you to those uh, documents that will help you with those fabrication uh, options, but you can make the entire system out of duckboard. Great. So the next question is, is a poly scrim tape required for PSK duct wrap applications, or can you use a vinyl tape without scrim? Good question. We do, we do recommend that you use a poly scrim uh, tape specifically for the application. 
We do have a few different tapes that we recommend for that application. You can uh, reach us, uh, we can give you those that information if you call John Elverman at our technical hotline team. And to that point, uh, Vanita, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, you'll actually see the technical support line right there. Um, that's 1-800-654-3103. If you have any technical questions that we don't actually address here today, you can certainly, or if you think of questions, maybe it's tonight as you're driving home, you can actually call our technical support line and they will be able to, uh, to address that for you. So the next question we have is, customers ask me how to wrap ductwork outside and keep it intact from rain, sun, et cetera. What do you recommend? Very good question. So duct wrap can, fiberglass duct wrap cannot be used outside. The product cannot get wet. Um, it causes a lot of problems with odor. It causes the degradation of the product. Uh, fiberglass insulation cannot get wet and it cannot be used outside. It is for use inside the building envelope only. Uh, we do not recommend using the product outside in any way, shape, or form. All right, so our next question is, I have concerns about fiber breaking into the airstream um, from duckboard and that's causing health problems. So I'm going to take a minute to actually address fiberglass concerns and safety and then Brennan, if you could talk a little bit, or Vanita, to the, um, the, the capacity for the, the product to lose fibers into the airstream. So as Brennan mentioned earlier, fiberglass is actually one of the most tested building insulation materials and these tests have actually um, gone on for decades. Now, I, I, there is probably a bit of a perception in the industry that fibers could enter the airstream and potentially be hazardous to respiratory health. And in fact, the studies from human epidemiology to in, um, animal inhalation studies to um, even environmental studies have pretty much shown that that's not the case. And what the environmental studies actually found is that the, the number of fibers actually, of all fibers, organic or inorganic of any kind, in air, in indoor environments is actually extremely low. And of those fibers, only a small, small, small fraction is, um, is actually of any sort of inorganic material like fiberglass. The rest of them are from organic materials like dust, clothes, that sort of thing, things you might get from curtains. So in terms of health problems, that's really not a risk we're terribly concerned about with our duct insulation for the simple standpoint that it is biosoluble. And that means when it, get in, when it gets into your lungs or if it were to get into your system, your lungs actually have the capacity to break it down and remove those fibers from your body. Um, now, if you have any additional questions about fiberglass health and safety, there are a number of resources online that you can actually find on the um, training modules that we mentioned earlier as well as we have blogs online and certainly um, other documentation and we even have a live webinar on this that you can, um, you can watch online or attend later on this, I guess, in 2018. So Vanita, can you speak to it a little bit from the duck board standpoint exactly? Sure. So the duck board um, on the mat facing, um, sorry, on the airstream surface side, uh, as Brennan showed in, um, in a previous um, slide, it is covered with a, we actually have the fiberglass core that has a mat facing, and that mat facing actually locks in the fibers from the fiberglass core. And then in the case of our super duct, we have a coating that's applied on top of the mat facing as well. So you do have that element. In addition, uh, we do test for, um, uh, our duct board products go through an air erosion test. And through that air erosion test, we measure how many fibers are released as air goes through the system. And these are tested to above 5,000 feet velocity. And um, we do not see any issues with fiberglass coming off the product in that environment. So not a concern um, that we are aware of. Okay, excellent. So um, we are actually gonna, we have a couple more questions to go through that we're gonna ask. And I know it's one o'clock, so if you have to drop off, these questions will, will be online on the recording. Um, but the next question we have is, when pinning duct wrap, can you use a three-quarter inch pin on one and a half inch duct wrap? I would have to go back and check the actual standards to see how the, the actual standard is written. I don't know that answer right now without actually referring back to a technical document. All right, excellent. We can refer to that later. Um, and then our final question is, um, formaldehyde binder in duct board, is that a risk when it's high temperature and or humid? And I, I can speak to that just a little bit on our safety data sheets. Um, largely when our, um, when it lists any sort of formaldehyde, you can find on our safety data sheets any information about that, any potential risk. Well, what, what the majority of them say, and I can't speak to this directly, is that there might be trace amounts, but nothing significant enough to cause um, any sort of harm or hazard. But I would certainly recommend that you view that on the safety data sheet. Do you guys have anything to add to that? No, nope, I think you've covered it well. 
All right, excellent. So um, that's actually going to conclude our questions today. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we do have a survey that's going to be immediately following this when you close out your screen. And we'd appreciate it if you take a little time to offer your feedback. And also, if you have any questions you weren't able to ask here, you can submit those via the survey, and we'll respond to you directly via email. Um, we did have a couple questions in here about the ductboard and fabrication, and you can actually request the ductboard fabrication. We'll come out to your site and uh, show you how it all works. So you can either do that in the survey or you can even do it online. And then um, do keep an eye on your, on your inbox. You're going to get your certificate of completion. That's going to be sent to you by Friday. So um, our webinar, <clears throat> excuse me, as I said, will be posted online. That's going to go on our exclusive content portal in the next couple days. And when it's live, we'll send you a link for direct access. Um, so if you missed any current presentation or you'd like to share it with your colleagues, you'd be welcome to do that as well. So otherwise, thank you very much for attending today. We hope you found this information very useful and relevant. And uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us via the survey or email or even call our technical support line there on the screen. So thank, thank you very much. Um, take care and enjoy the rest of your week.